side we have these four tiki's here these tiki's represent the four most powerful gods in the hawaiian culture i did say that we were going to be heading into akipu on this tour today but there's actually a few things here in kualoa that we want to show you guys first now the very top of this road we're actually going to visit a temple site called Bahipana, and that's where the hawaiians would pray to to their gods now here over to our right these tiki's represent the four most powerful gods to the far, far right, we have Kanaloa, the god of the ocean. Next, we have Lono, the god of land. Then there's Kane, the god of fresh water. And to the far left, we have Ku. Ku is the god of war and the god of battle. So Hawaiians would give offerings to these gods, they would pray to these gods. All these different ceremonies would be done at areas called Bahipana. Now, at the top of this road, as I said, we'll be able to visit our Bahi. Along the way, we will get to see some beautiful views of Kanyohe Bay. So we'll first see the views over to our left, and then we're going to make our way around and check out over to the island of the Now the island of the island of the island of was given that nickname during the plantation here. But in ancient times, Hawaiians would call it Moko Li. Moko Li. Moko Li. Li means small or little. The name is explained in the story, talking about the goddess, Kiki'iaka, who once traveled over the island. Well, when she came across Kula, she encountered a lizard or a popo that was guarding this area. For whatever reason, the lizard would not allow her permission to pass by. The story says that they got into a fight right in the forefront of the valley. Eventually, the gods prevailed. Oh, she beat the lizard and she flew it up.
this path, there may be some seeds or rocks on the ground, so please watch your step as you make your way up um, to those cross sticks there. Japanese. Japanese. Alright. Let's make sure this isn't all mixed up. How many <laughs> Japanese do you need? One. Just one? And <laughs> English. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Korean. 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 Just like this one here, be broken down and destroyed to prevent anyone from worshiping the old gods. 
So about 10 years ago, the ranch really wanted to recreate one of the temple sites for everyone to see. We have a nice clear example for it. And we also have an opportunity to go inside and kind of get a feeling of what it was like back in ancient times. So with that being said, if you guys take a look, this is just a replica, just an example. Um, but we did try to make it as authentically as we could. So also with that being said, the rock wall that goes around the area was made without any cement or mortar, nothing holding these rocks together. So tra traditional stacking method, we call uhauhum pohaku. So we do ask that everyone please stay off of the rock wall. No sitting on it, standing on it, stepping on it. We just wanna make sure you guys are okay while you guys are here and you guys are safe. Um, there's also like a wire on the right hand side. There's wires on both. But the wire on the right is live. There's a, around the corner towards the bottom of the hill, there's like a machine that's connected to it. So just don't touch it. You'll have a shocking experience. <laughs> Not in a good way. So be careful. Also, what we see here over to our left hand side, these structures within the Vucky. Very common structures that we would have seen amongst various different types. To the far, far left, we have what's called the Hale Kiyai. Can you guys say Hale? Hale. Do you know what that means? <laughs> House. I get a, no, yeah. all the time, I love it. So Kiai means to guard or to protect. So this is where the guard would have lived. Uh, this is where he was to look after the entrance and just to make sure that no one was to come to disrespect the site. Also, we have Lono. Do you guys remember what Lono was in control of? No? Oh, okay, that's okay. Uh, peace, agriculture, and land. So very easy to remember. Lono starts with L, land starts with L. So he is the god of the land. Being that we are a ranch, a lot of our operations do deal with agriculture, so we thought it would be fitting to use him as an example who could have been found within a Bucky funnel. And then we have the other hale or hut out there that's called the hale pahu. Pahu means drum. So inside you guys are going to see examples of ceremonial drums that are always stored here in Kualoa and most often used during ceremonies celebrating the birth of someone of high rank. And then at the very, very end, that tower-like structure out there, that is called the Al Nu'u. That is where the Hawaiians would go inside to pray. Oh. They believed that it was to channel their prayers into the spiritual realms, making it easier for their gods to hear. And then the very, very last thing I want to point out were those sticks right at the very entrance. They were crossed. Um, we just opened them up, but they're called Kulo'ulo'u sticks. They were used to mark areas of sacredness and significance. They also meant that some type of protocol was required in order to enter into a site such as this. So we do have a demonstration for you guys. Looks like we got some volunteers, involuntary volunteers. No, okay. Um, so uh, they're going to be showing you guys what's called a ho'okupu. That is the gift offering. Various other things could have been done. You could have done an oli or a chant. You could have also done a cleansing ritual, but that one involves going down to the ocean and getting eaten. So we don't got enough time for that. Sorry, can't do that for you guys today. But we do have some time to do a ho'okupu. So what Kaipo is going to be doing is they're going to be taking what's called a kukuina lei into the vahipana and then they're actually going to be setting it on top of the rock wall over to our right hand side facing the ocean if we were to be worshiping any of the gods we would have placed it in front of the tiki there but this is just an, an example demonstrating um what could have been done as some type of offering and we, but we still want to bring some honor and respect to the site as well so we're doing that she's going to be placing the lei or the necklace on top holding it up now what she's doing is she's bringing it to her nose and she's taking in a breath. The Hawaiians believe that when you exchange a breath with oh. someone, you became uh, well acquainted with them. So she would do that. It's called a honi ihu and place it on top of the rock. And then they'll say e mai, which means welcome. And then we can go in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means welcome. Ikonomai. Yeah, good job. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience. You guys can go ahead, head on inside, take some photos. Let us know if you guys need help or if you have any questions. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Don't you have any questions for him? Any questions? Thank you. そこ入れといたらいいと思いますけど。<笑><笑>
the god or goddess of the ako the goddess you the lizard did you hear the legend the goddess fought with the lizard because she was there and the lizard said you should wear this mask of fear so she was all because she stayed there so akong goddess you don't have this Number 10. Number 10. Rolling, rolling here. Careful, huh? Ow! Oh, uh. Help! 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 All right, folks, so being that this area is just an example of a temple site, the ranch has allowed it to be used for other projects. One of those projects was Jumanji. Jumanji, welcome to the jungle, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart. Now here over to our left hand side, that's where the Jaguar Mountain was situated, right above the Bucky Tunnel. Inside of the Bucky is where the snake pit was, where Ruby Roundhouse was visited by one of the snakes. And down here, this is where Kevin Hart was riding on an elephant. And this is also where Jack Black was held at gunpoint by the villain. So a lot of the scenes towards the ending of the movie were all filmed right here in this area. Yep. From now as we continue on, it's going to be getting a little more bumpy as we go, okay? Eventually we will be reaching what's called it, Ahupua'a. Ahupua'a were boundary markers that Hawaiians would use to mark different towns. As we pass by our Ahupua'a, that will then tell us we're heading into the Ahupua'a.
purchased by the Judd family. They didn't have hockey pool yet, so this rock wall was built to keep them within their boundaries. After purchasing hockey pool, then they had a hole put in the wall so everyone could go through. Now what we see here over to our left hand side, this is called the Ahu Kua'a. So this is what Hawaiians would use in ancient times to mark their towns and communities. So this tells us we're now heading into Ahu Kua'a. It's about to get a little more bumpy as we go. Jurassic World. So Kali Valley, where we have a 
Akiku'u is where a lot of Jurassic World occurred. They also filmed in Kaaba too, but here in Akiku'u, we do have some sets from that movie. So very, very soon, we're going to be diving through the movie set from Jurassic World. So get your cameras ready. Just literally right around the corner, right at the bottom of this hill. For the filming of Jurassic World, they had filmed eight sets all throughout the cool Orange. Uh, a lot of them here in Hakuhu were very close to us, so it was quite challenging as we were setting new tours, they would be building the, the structures or filming, uh, but thankfully that also meant that it would be very easy to incorporate into our tours. And so here we are. So here from Jurassic World, we have the Indominus Rex cave. So over to our left hand side, you guys can take a look at the entrance over there. So the Indominus Rex cage, um, is where the Dominus Rex dinosaur lived. This is where they would watch her and they would observe and um, kind of track her activity and behavior. Um, while we go, or after we go inside, you guys will get to see, we also have the observation deck as well as some of the scratch marks on the wall. But for now, you guys can take some photos of the outside and then we'll have a chance to go inside to take some pictures within too. <coughs> Now that one looks like a really sturdy concrete structure. Honestly, all it is is a bunch of boards and plastic right upon it. And then it was painted gray. It looks like concrete, but it's really not. Here over to our right hand side, we can now see we have a film location sign here. We can get another angle of the entrance if you'd like. And then we're going to go inside and we'll stop on the inside for a little bit so you guys can take a photo of the observation deck as well as some of the scratch marks on the wall. So over to our left hand side, we have the observation deck where Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are set inside of as they're looking for the dinosaur in the cage. And then behind us, we have the scratch marks on the wall there from the Indominus Rex. So that's the marks that she had made to kind of trick everyone into thinking that she had climbed over. That way they would open up the gate and look for her, and then that's when she made her run for it, and she escaped to the floor. Yeah. 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 As we continue on, uh, there is going to be another site that we will get to see from Jurassic World here on Kikuku. Um, but the only other step that we have left is actually in that the Dryosphere Station is. The Dryosphere Station was the loading dock in the Dryosphere, which are those big glass balls that everyone or that people could sit inside of it and would roll through a valley amongst the dinosaur. I'm um, going to come to the Dryosphere here. That would be super cool, but uh, the rest was only able to keep the structure behind. So we've named it probably in Canada. And it's actually become a venue for like parties and um, mostly weddings and luncheons. Um, it's as in the top valley, it's a very, very bad, super difficult to get to. It's literally right on the mountain side, and so not too many of our vehicles can make it all the way back there. Um, this truck is one of the few that can. Um, but we do have another little area that was used in Jurassic World. As well. So as you guys can see back here in Hakipu'u, there's a lot of water. We got a lot of streams that we're crossing over. We're gonna be crossing over um, this next stream, the stream in just a little bit. But also in this big area, this is where they found the four seats after the South Park so they had a big cage. So she was camouflaged among some of the bushes. Here over to our left hand side, right here in this stream area. Uh, is where she was hiding. So on the left hand side amongst those bushes there to the left of the street, that's where she was camouflaged. And then as some of the guards were walking around and here in the forest trying to look for her, eventually she appeared and one of them met their fate right there in the middle of the street. That's another site. We just don't have any signage to it for this spot. Uh, but another site up ahead, we can see her over to the left hand side of the road one again. We have from Palm Skull Island. So, uh, yes, the latest King Kong movie. 
Guard Chapel, Jackson, Tom Middleston, John Goodman, and Bree Larson. In this area is where they filmed the scene after Samuel Jackson's helicopter had crashed because it was smacked out of the sky by King Kong. So they brought this prop here into the valley in pieces. They assembled it right near this spot and then that's when they filmed it. But if you guys take a look at the movie, it's in about 17 seconds of the entire film. It's really not so much. <coughs> After this point, there's going to be one more set that we're going to be driving through. And it comes from a really, really new production. Um, it's one of the movies new. It actually hasn't been released yet. And by next, next month, it should be out on Netflix. But it is a Netflix original, so it's only the Netflix app. And it is called Triple Frontier by Ben Affleck and Charlie Hunt. Uh, for that movie, they came into the ranch and built all over the property too. They built about six sets all together. So we only have one left. Technically, two, the second one's very, very hard. It's, it's very hard to see. But this one here, that one in the other head, this was the driveway to the villain's house. Now, the movie is about a group of former co workers that back together to catch. Who sells illegal items? Let's just say that. I know we got some young ears on the track. So they actually go to Columbia to catch this, the villain. And um, up ahead is where they had built the driveway to the villain's house. So we're all the streets here. A lot of our streets are, street crossings are very, very bumpy. So make sure you guys are okay. So we recently cleared it out, hence all the brown, but we're going to be clearing it out and making more space for more native land. So here we're starting on the inside, we're going to be going up this really, really 
dito is really comfy. Like I said, it's very steep and it's the longest hill we have here on the tour. So just sit tight. It's going to be a little bit. I'm going to try to make it as smooth as possible. But at the very top, we will get to see all of Pakistan. So we'll be able to take uh, more pictures up there in the valley. $215. So it was a really good deal. The purchase of it also came along with that fish pond out there. It's an ancient fish pond we call Moli. It's about 800 years old. Fish ponds like that, excuse me, were made to trap fish to keep them close to the people. That way, whenever there were times that there wasn't any food here on the islands, Hawaiians could always gather some food from their fish ponds just for that time of emergency. 
Um, thankfully, it's still fully functioning. We now use it for oysters that we grow on the far side from us, and then closer to us, that's where some of our other tours go. Now we have one more step or stop up ahead. We'll be able to take some more photos. So I'll see you guys there in just a little bit.
shoes over here.
Ende.
on your step. Thank you so much for visiting. Here we are.